Charlotte Soccer Show, John Hayes, Danny Brams. It's a Sunday afternoon. We're live here on a Sunday afternoon, but we're doing the show for the people, Danny. It's great to see you after Charlotte FC's first match of the season. First match of the season. That's why we needed to get together today, Danny, and, and discuss Friday's friendly against Sporting Kansas City. Cheers to you. Cheers to you, sir. The boys are back in action. The, we're playing soccer again. Balls have been kicked in anger. Goals have been scored. Goals have been conceded. And uh, how great to see uh, Charlotte FC back in action. It feels good. feels great. It was awesome um, just knowing Scotty Arfield got a brace. Patrick Ajimong scored. Uh, almost everybody on the, on the team that's healthy got to see the pitch. Uh, Dean Smith spoke afterwards. We're going to hear from him. We're going to hear from Scotty. Uh, this is a Sunday night special. And, John, we talked about last week. A week this is going to become a more regular thing uh it may not be next sunday it may not be the sunday after that but when we get in season it's going to be every sunday and it's presented by hot fly and hot fly is helping us to bring you a sunday night charlotte fc show different times you know you, know, you never know exactly what time it's going to be we might uh settle on a set time eventually once the season gets up and rolling but i'm happy to be here thank you hot fly thank you tifos thank you to people who are listening not live later afterwards thank you everyone I'm in like Alanis Morissette mood, dude. I'm just thank you, confidence. Thank you, everybody, dude. I, I'm just so thankful right now. Well, what's what's funny is I'm seeing that there's a few people that have uh, gotten into the room live now, which is great because this was definitely like a an under the radar live show that we were going to do on the Sunday, a dry right. run. So if so, if you're in here with us now, watching us live, cheers to you. You're hanging out with us during um, what would I would call a, a bit of a rehearsal show. Yeah, it's a uh, it's your true tifos if you're with us live right now because we didn't advertise this or try to hype this at all. We just said, hey, let's just pop up live and see what happens. See if anybody shows up, and we'll just do what we're going to do anyway. Yeah, so thanks for thanks for hanging in here, and thanks for mentioning Hotfly as well. Uh, you, you have to have the both gotcha. both dates circled, right? You have to have February 24th at Hotfly circled the, the pre match party, the tailgate that we're going to throw at Hotfly. Uh, make sure you join us there, but but specifically on march 2nd uh the away day the first one of the year against vancouver Th there was a hint by the way on hot flies instagram page about a a beer that may or may not be released on uh march 2nd for that party at hot fly against vancouver yeah hopefully i didn't uh give too much away when i was dropping hints earlier uh but yeah it's uh it's if you saw the person who starred in the Instagram story, you might have a hint about what the theme of the beer is going to be, for sure. And it's Fresh Drop Friday. What Hot Fly does is give you new beers every Friday, just like we're giving you new episodes every Sunday. It's There's synergy. This is why we choose to partner with brands like these, you know? So it's the first time this season that we're going to say something like this. Charlotte Draws, Sporting Kansas City, 3-3 three, three in the first pre season friendly danny it was it was really exciting to to mm -hmm. log in to social media on friday right around lunchtime mm -hmm. and and see some highlight clips uh two scott arfield goals a patrick ajaman goal as mm -hmm. well we're, we're gonna break all of that down and we're gonna talk about those those goals but what was your reaction just first and foremost danny to you know just on friday seeing the players back on the pitch under manager dean smith it was it was bigger than I thought because I thought to myself, hey, we're a month away. I'm going to start slowly ramping up to get to where we start, uh, you know, playing this this uh, California tournament a little bit. I can't wait for that. And then all of a sudden, it was like boom in my face. All of a sudden, Charlotte FC guys are scoring goals on my on my timeline on Friday. It was beautiful, you know, and like Jalen Lindsay getting an assist and Tiger Smalls getting involved and, and like, you know, like the first round the first round draft pick, uh, the new kid from the Super Draft, like. He like our one of our youngest players getting an assist to one of our oldest players, and you know, stuff like that is just like very interesting the way it all like connects and gets you back in the spirit of like wanting to just be for the crown baby. And like, uh, I, it was, uh, it was, I knew it would be good, but it was better than I thought to answer your question. So, we, we have heard Danny about Dean Smith saying things like, Oh, wait till you see my, my first starting 11 mm -hmm. uh, of the season. Uh, so, so my question would be. Uh, you looked at the starting 11 on Friday and I, do you consider, first of all, do you consider this the first starting 11? I'm not sure if I do, but it, it was the first starting 11 that we've seen for, for Dean Smith and mm -hmm. Danny, it looked like this. So and I don't think, 
I, I don't think this is the starting the first eleven that Dean was referencing in that comment when he said you'll be shocked to see my first eleven or you'll be surprised to see my first eleven or I need to get the exact wording on that quote so I can say it correctly. But he may, he dropped the hint about oh the first eleven is going to blow people's minds. I don't think this game is what he was. I would think he was referring to February twenty fourth on that one. However, this eleven did blow my mind. <laughs> Can you read it out for the? Uh, yeah, if you're, yeah, if the, you're not watching, if you're listening later, we're looking at Enzo up top with Yuri Tavares from Crown Legacy last year. He was one of the the great scorers and strikers on uh, Legacy. If you missed that, so he's not necessarily a brand new face, but he is somewhat new to this uh, to playing with guys like Scotty Arfield on the wing left side, uh, Tiger Smalls on the right wing, Bronico and Philip Mayaka holding it down in a double pivot. We're looking at for the starting uh, for the first half. Dean came out in like a 4-2-2 two, two, two or 4, you know, that I would have wanted to see. Maybe you could call this a 4-4-2 four, four, also, but you could also, depending on how high up the wingers are, you, uh, the the R field and smalls are, but let's call it a 4-4-2. Four, four, but Mayaka Bronico, sort of that double pivot that we always love to see. JP, Jao Pedro as the left back. This surprised me, but John, you said it was less surprising to you. Privet and Milan at center backs and then Lindsay Kalina. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's like, what Dean called these were mixed 11s. You know, it's like mostly starters, but then some total wild card young guys. What I thought was was amazing seeing this for the first time, Danny, was your 4 2 2 2 prediction. You got it right on the number for me on this it? one. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I didn't give you the credit when I made this graphic to kind of bring our field and, and, and Tyler right, Smalls right. Just move right them in up. front of there. <laughs> move yes. those guys up and in just a little bit. And it's a 4 2 2 2 for sure. Yeah, so you you got it right, Danny. You're, you're Traditionalists you, would call that a four four two, but uh, you know I know they would, they certainly would, and that's that's how I saw that that yeah. starting formation of four four two. So it was a really fun starting lineup. I just wanted to show that just to have some fun because that's certainly what we're going to do um, on these game recap shows. We're going to take a look at player ratings. We're going to, um, of course, discuss formational uh, tactics as well, and and of course we're going to shout out to some of the tifos because um, you know specifically uh joseph doke hanging out here uh with us on a sunday afternoon cheers cheers to you joseph um and i appreciate you being in the chat watching the show live here um so the other thing that we're going to do danny is we're going to uh, listen to some post-game commentary as well uh and you know it was really nice specifically to hear from you know one of our favorite players a player that we really respect somebody that's that's had a really nice career in soccer representing this club after this draw uh, on the final preseason day in Miami. It's, it's the brace scorer. It's, it's Scott Arfield who, who spoke with Will Martin post game and here were his thoughts on the three, three draw. Yeah, very good. So obviously the results, not the most important thing this, this early in preseason. Um, it was more about getting the transitions, getting the movement um, and obviously progressing as a team. Obviously happy to score two goals, you always are, whether it's in a training game or whether it's in a, in a game like this. So hopefully we can continue to do so and bring them into, into the MLS this season. Uh, starts the season with two goals. And he's, I love the way he says that. He says, well, it's nice to score two goals no matter what you're doing. If you're yeah. hanging out in a preseason friendly or if you're, by the way, playing in the Champions League. Uh, two Results goals don't nice. matter, but I did score two goals. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What did you think about his take on the match? Uh, I, he said it right. It's really all about just getting up, getting your connections. I mean, this, you can't like um, read any, you can read almost nothing into the result except for maybe the sort of philosophical, spiritual bugaboo of the fact that we were up 3 0 in this match and conceded uh, the the other three. Or I think we were up 2 1 and 3 1, and then we conceded two late ones for the draw. You know, like that sucks. But it was mostly subs and scrubs on the pitch by that time anyway, and no one was really taking it seriously. Um, but again, like we showed the formation earlier and it was cool to see Tiger Smalls get involved in a scoring play, you know, with Lindsay and Scott. But like, again, like I also saw people on Twitter that were like hitting us up and like, hey, you know, who was the right wing, you know, and, and I, I'm glad you showed that graphic. And I think eventually it does matter who the right wing is. I don't know necessarily, you know, do we, do, there's not much you can read into Tiger Smalls, you know, starting in this lineup. It's just like, hey, that's the spot where where Dino just kind of said, "Hey, let's let's put a few young guys out there and let's let's give our first 
super draft pick a chance to take the pitch in the first preseason match. But don't read too much into it. That's you know, it's a really smart, I think, move from Dean Smith to break up his his envisioned maybe or his assumed starting eleven into mm-hmm. two different units uh, to put potential players who were on fringes, players that want to play themselves maybe into that eleven. Mm-hmm. Danny, right? I think Dean Smith gives right. a player an opportunity to play with some guys who are going to be in the first team. Tiger Smalls, obviously, I don't expect him to start. Uh, I don't um, expect him to start for the legacy. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but he, but he did start in, in Dean yeah. Smith's first eleven, which is, which is, he which did. is, which is pretty funny. Um, Scott Arfield uh, on, you know, what, what type of improvements the squad has to make? Remember, this is just practice time; it's a friendly. But at the same time, if you look at the calendar, Danny, February twenty fourth is coming up pretty quick. Well, there always is. No matter you know, if you win this game five or six zero, there's there's always stuff that you can, you can work on. This is so early in it, but you'll get to. Um, the more meaningful towards the towards the end of coach coach Ella. This is um, it was more performance and, and as I say is getting that cohesion together as a team moving forward and then the mentality shifts when you when you get closer to that twenty fourth. Of course you want to you want to breed mentality and a winning culture. Um, but right at this minute in time it's probably not as important as, as a cohesion. So hopefully we can get that and then move forward and look forward to this game. Interesting I think something that he said Danny the final game at Coachella is February 17th, and I believe that you have that schedule for I do. us heading into to Coachella. That fi- final game there is February 17th. You can see that first game, February mm-hmm. 7th, uh, against LA Galaxy. Then they'll play that Wednesday. Excuse me, they'll play that Saturday. So they'll go Wednesday, Saturday mm-hmm. to start, and then they'll get a full week off until that Make February some training 17th sessions, game. Yeah. Yes, 100%. Full week off, I'm talking about from just a game point of view. And, and I think they're, they're planning on playing a closed-door friendly as well mm-hmm. uh, when they're out in Coachella. So there's four total matches for Charlotte FC there. But this final match, 10 a.m. Pacific time on February 17th. We're hoping, by the way, that this game is is streamed somewhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, we sure hope, yeah. We sure yeah. hope. But it was but it was interesting yeah. to hear Scott Arfield talk about this Coachella tournament because I've always, I've always figured that that Minnesota United match on February 17th Mm-hmm. Is the official dry run for yeah. for Saturday, February twenty fourth against New York City? If if I'm Dean Smith, I'm starting the same eleven that I would want to start on the twenty fourth on the seventeenth for sure. And Minnesota is one of our early season opponents. I believe we play them in the first month, six weeks of the season. So nice to get a look at them, a team we've never played before ever officially. So that's cool. Uh, Coachella is great. I wish I could get out there, but as you mentioned, Joe Labou, shout out to him for always connecting with fans. He went on uh, Charlotte FC Fan TV last week or a week and a half ago, I think, and he said, uh, you know, he he was like, I fully expect those games to be streamed. I don't have details yet, but we plan to, you know, get the details out there. He was acting like surprised that people would think they wouldn't be streamed. So hopefully it, it all works out and it's easy and we can watch them. 10 a.m. Pacific, what is that? 1 a.m. Is that 1 p.m.? Uh, Local here right. in CLT. Yep. Maybe so, maybe so. maybe some midday. Maybe a midday get together. You know, maybe we can get uh, maybe we can get the Hot Fly folks to put the put the game on the big screen. Who knows if it's streaming? That would be ideal. Uh, I mean, that's how much I'm hard. Jones into like watch this team play a game for sure. Me too. Me too. So you've seen the Coachella schedule. That's what's up uh, next for Charlotte FC. They're going to be heading out uh, to to the West Coast. It's going to be a really fun tournament as well. Uh, we're going to be making. We're going to be covering that here on on Charlotte Soccer Show. There's there's no doubt about that. So uh, you know, one other thing I think that's really important to think about when when you are a guy like Scott Arfield and and, and you're playing for a new manager, it's what's it been like, right? And, and I I had a chance to talk to Dean Smith at his press conference, and I basically asked my question in a way that was like, you just got to see everybody for the first time over the last 10 days. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it's, and, and what's your reaction to that? What's your first impression? And here's what Scott Arfield had to say about just that. Yeah, it's fairly, um, fairly normal. It was a more uh, normality for myself um, and the British boys and, and the team hearing a familiar accent. Um, that British baseness is there for everybody to see. Um, obviously, I think, Myself, I think with, with this pre-season, it's um, it's more a British pre-season. I think um, in terms of running, uh, getting onto the ball, but he wants a certain way of playing, which is which is uh, different to what we played last season. So it's getting that familiarity um, together as a team, and it, it will take time. But that's why we, you set up so many games. Obviously today um, we'll have four in the next phase of pre-season when we go there in, in Coachella. So we're looking forward to that again, and then hopefully um, we we'll look forward to New York. 
New York's on the mind, isn't it, Danny? A place mm -hmm. that you uh, have been very recently. I was there. I was there this time. I was just pulling back in from my drive, my trip to New York, uh, literally uh, this time last week. Uh, but yes, yeah, Scotty, absolutely. Like I love how focused he is on the schedule. I, I, whenever I hear from pro athletes, I love how like super. They always know like what their next. Even they always talk about like game to game basis. They always know like what they've got coming down the pipeline. So they reveal it sometimes without me even meaning to. Uh, did did he mention that it's a British feel at the at the camp? I don't I don't know. Did you hear that word dropped four or five times? Like it's British this, British that, it's British. You know, it's a British invasion in Miami and Charlotte uh, at AHPP. But what the one thing that stuck out to me is he said it's a British camp because of how much running we're doing. So you know like. I don't know that it's necessarily the best answer. I'm not a coach. I'm not an elite athlete. But I can tell you, uh, for a team that was famous for losing leads late a bunch last year and kind of fading uh, the 80th minute every single week and lose, you know, losing the last 10 minutes almost every game except for a few, there's that you could do worse than just making them run their asses off in preseason and see if it changes next year. So. Well, unfortunately, if you really want to get down to business, what happened in this match is that Charlotte FC was leading 3-1 <laughs> with 15 minutes to go and, and conceded two late goals uh, to to deal with that. They also dealt with some injuries. And that, that's a and, and the nice thing is, is that if, if we're, if we're going to bring that up, let Dean Smith uh, take care of that question because he's very, very well aware that uh, these late goals have been an issue for Charlotte FC. And he's somebody, Danny, that really didn't take – Friday very seriously and he also had an uh, an injury update uh, you speak you, you spoke about uh, British culture uh, listen to this word he uses the only problem we probably got a couple of niggles a uh, couple of injuries which is always a little bit of a worry during pre-season Bill just felt his hamstring uh, Scotty his groin and Nico I think he just turned his ankle slightly so you know you end up in the game with you know young Brian Romero one in midfield with Nick Scardina as well so you know, we can see two late goals, which are very preventable and, and for me are an easy fix. So uh, a great first game for us. Very preventable, an easy fix, a great first game. You know, so he's well aware, Danny. He, he's well aware. And I think anybody who's taking a microscope and taking a long look into that 3-1 that lead and then collapse late in the game, I think Dean Smith uh, put a blanket over that fire pretty quickly. Yeah, I love hearing it. Uh, I do think that it's easy to just – it's like you always – when you're in this new situation, he's the new coach, right? So, like, it's probably the smartest move is to just come out and be confident. Like, oh, yeah, we conceded a too few late in this friendly. That's an easy fix. I got this. Just portray confidence. It's great. If The problem is that, like, that comes back and boomerangs back to hit you when, like, if the results don't change, if we do continue to concede late over and over again going forward – then all of a sudden his confidence just sounds like empty bluster, which we don't like to see. So, uh, but I'll, I'll ride with him. I'm riding the train for now, but I am just like wary, trying to be a little wary, just to be a little less gushing. Cause I've been like super gushing, like in my, you know, coverage or whatnot of, of Dean coming to this club. And I just, you know, I'm trying to make sure I don't want to give my whole heart just yet. Like, you know, like you got to hold a little something back, you know? Well, here, here's Dean Smith uh, post-match on his overall thoughts on the match. Yeah, it was a, a good game for us. Very competitive, which was good. We got off to a really good start. Um, the work we've been doing over the last two weeks, uh, a lot of it came out in it. Um, a lot of really good work without the ball, making them go where we wanted them to and, we opened one corridor up for their first first goal. Um, Scotty Arfield took his goals really well, worked them really well as well. And, um, yeah, I, was, I really enjoyed it. Scotty Arfield, he took it and he worked it. And that's what he you did, gotta, Danny. You, first you work it and then you take it, you know, <laughs> and then you gotta, you got to do both. It's important to do both for sure. Uh, but, yeah, you know, it's it really interesting to kind of hear him uh, speak afterwards and, and feel like, you know, there's – potential here in this side and, and he's feeling good about someone like Scott Arfield. Right. I, I, and, and I think it's time for us to address this. Right. I think there's maybe two people in this fan base, two people that are very close in and around this club that felt like Scott Arfield was underutilized by Christian Latanzio. And every time Scott Arfield came on the pitch, especially as a super sub, he made a huge mm -hmm. impact for this team, Danny. Yeah. And, and to have a guy like Dean Smith come into town and maybe realize that right away is a is a very very good sign. Yeah, he only scored the winner against the Los Angeles Football Club. You know, the defending champs. He only scored what should have been the winner 
uh, against Nashville before the stupid penalty that was given up a, a seconds later. So like, yeah, a guy who uh, with a flair for the dramatic, who knows how to work a goal. You know, when I think about that Nashville goal, the way he took, you know, kind of a hot pass down from from Melinda's head and just took one touch and set himself up perfectly. Like, very very few people in the league can do what Scott Arfield can do. Like, I, I it's just the fact of the matter and the matter of the fact, baby. So we showed the first half lineup, and now here, Danny, is the the second half starting changes. Lineup. Ring changes, changes are in. Yeah, uh, Scott Arfield. You you heard Dean Smith mention a, a little bit of a groin issue, but but clearly not not a big issue for Scott Arfield. He's fine. Um, and, and it was a bit of a shift change here in the second half. Kerwin Vargas is on the left wing. Patrick Ajemong there at the striker position feels like to me. Carl Swiderski maybe out there on the right hand side where and maybe mm-hmm. I put him there on this graphic, you, Danny, because yeah. that's where I want him to be. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No um, hidden agendas there. Uh, Pekovic uh, at, in the midfield alongside Ashley Westwood and Breck Diagre as well. Mm-hmm. And I have I to like be honest that. with you, Danny. I, I like that midfield a lot. I do too. I do too. I, I, I think it's it's with Westwood in the middle there. I think it offers you some flexibility. I think there's going to be a really nice competition in mm-hmm. the midfield this year. Uh, Diop in the middle there with Bill Tuiloma, uh, Burn on the right hand side. And I had to be honest, as I was putting this together, I was like, who is Forbes? Jelaine Forbes, Jelaine yeah, Forbes, Forbes, the draftee, right. yeah, the young, yes, I, the young draftee, yeah, exactly. Thirty eighth overall pick in this year's 2023 2023 uh, super draft, and uh, he he got a run out there as well. It's good to Wake see Forest, the, the super Carolina draft kid, Wake Forest, you know. Yeah, it was fun to see the the draft picks get some run. He's the, he's the he's the Hamidi Diop of twenty twenty four. You know, the the promising young left back center back hybrid from uh, college ranks. So uh, specifically, I think Dean uh, spoke about this group and they're playing the second half. Uh, the next thing is certainly connecting from mid- midfield to the front. Um, I thought we we didn't connect it as well as we could. We gave the ball away quite cheaply at times. Our counter pressing to win it back was really good, um, and we made them play where we wanted. But I'd like to see a lot more of us on the ball um, and be, you know, um, a bit more penetrative. And I love to hear him uh, after the match talk about that connection between the midfield and the forward, mm-hmm. four words, I should say. And that's, you know, you had a second half goal and it was Patrick Ajemong, of course, because a Patrick Ajemong goal is inevitable when he's playing. Right. That is yeah. what happens when yeah. he gets minutes. You give him 45 minutes in a preseason friendly uh, on a Friday afternoon goal. against Kansas City, he probably will yeah. score. And yep. he he did just that, a nice left-footed finish for, for Patrick Ajemong. But specifically, you said you really like this midfield. Uh, maybe a little of a, a lack of connection between that midfield and, and the front three. Yeah, I mean, it's it's Westwood and Diagra who only got like three or four games together last year. And then you you bring in Petkovic, who never played with either of them. So, you know, obviously they're not they're going to lack some connection. But it, it connection from the midfield, I do feel that's a little bit of a generic talking point. Like, I feel like coaches always go to that. It's like, oh, we just, just need to connect better. The midfield needs to connect the defense to offense better, and then we'll win. So, like, it's kind of like one of the things they always say. But I do, like... I hate to see a team without connection. I do hate that. So uh, that's the counterpoint, I suppose. Uh, but I like the midfield there. I like the back line. I I think um, – I really think Tuoloma – you you're the first person that put me onto this, and I'm going to take the ball and run with it, which is just that I think Tuoloma has a really good chance to play his way back into the starting lineup here. He was kind of banished under Latanzio, but he was a guy that was brought in to be a starter. And I, I think that uh, – he no seeing Melanda as like the main center back in the first uh, back line, and then Tuoloma as sort of like the holding it down as the experienced guy in that second back line. I just really see those two as kind of like projecting as the starting back center backs for me. Not sure what was up. Carujo never played right, and Marks never played, but like a couple guys didn't get to play. Um, just to jump in there, uh, I wanted to mention this. And I'm glad that you said this is because uh, Kuroho did play. Uh, oh, he did. Okay, he, my bad. Sorry, he, 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 no, in he late. Okay, he did come in late in the second half. He, he did got, get he some got, minutes, and he's the reason we lost then because he he's the reason we <laughs> conceded those late goals. No, but for there. as far as Bill Tuoloma is concerned, I'm glad you brought that up because I'm starting to back off that take a little bit, Danny. Really, I am, and the reason why is because. Uh, you know, Dean Smith already mentioned a left-footed center back. Uh, he, yeah. he has a group of, of players that are right-footed. He wants to potentially bring somebody in. So in my mind, if Dean Smith is able to, hi- to sign 
a left-footed center back that leaves one spot available for every single center back on the squad right now. Mm -hmm. And who gets that spot? Probably Adilson Milanda. Yeah, yeah, I would have to think. Right? So, yeah. so two. I mean, Diop, Diop is left footed, right? So, like, I mean, I, is he the guy? He Do you really want to have like a rookie and a, a second and a half year player as your back line again? Yeah. Uh, how many Diop is not a center back for me on yeah, the squad this it. season? Uh, I would rather see Jao Pedro. Jao no Pedro also left footed, but you see him as a potential left back. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I thought I thought that's interesting conversation. And the reason why I'm backing off of that, Danny, is just simply because it just feels like there's a log jam at that position right now. Yeah. And I think Bill is somebody that's going to be potentially rewarded if he's able to stay fit. If some some niggles happen, like yeah, Dean yeah. Smith talked about it. There's yeah, that was there's the word. More, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's more niggles uh, within the very, squad. It's a very and, British word uh, for American, very American reasons. Let's just yes. put it that way. Okay. Good. Good idea. <laughs> and the I, I, the um, the other thing that I would say when it specifically comes to the center back position is that Bill Tuoloma just doesn't have it on tape right now for, for the club. He, he has to do everything uh, right now in front of the manager. What about the tape that's running in Dean's head though? That's what yeah. I'm saying. Do we, we don't, we can't see that. So we don't know, but. No, no, we can't. There's one more Dean, one more thing Dean Smith did talk about uh, post game. He was asked if if anybody individually, like a Bill Tuoloma, uh, stood out to him in this friendly match. Yeah, any uh, outcomers today? Individual call outs or more about the group? Just no, more more, yeah. more about the group. To be honest, uh, you know, two very mixed teams. Um, you know, great to see some of the legacy players uh, involved as well. Uh, you know, I, I like Yuri. I, I like what he brings to the game. He's got great feet. Uh, good balance as well, um, but you can see the first game for Joe Pedro, and you know after 30 minutes he was he was feeling the pace of it, and that's to be expected because he's a different level man. I found that to be very interesting, Danny, talking about uh, Yeri uh, yeah. Urinen, uh, who did not play in this match. Right, he has a small injury as well, Yeri. I think Dean Lina tipped his hand right there a little bit that he that he really really loves. Yeri as his number one left back, and I think so. Yeah, be his. Uh, he he. I think Yeri might be one of the first names on the team sheet every right. single match day, based on a comment like that. Based on his skill set, he comes over from Europe. Obviously, plays for the Finnish national team. Yep, he's 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 very good. And he's got a classy I think, foot. I think yeah, he does, and I, and I think. I think what Dean is looking for right now in these positions, Danny, are a little bit of class, right? I think he can he can teach players who are super young, like a Brian Romero, how to develop class. But to start his tenure as Charlotte FC manager, Danny, I think he needs players on the pitch to help him use their class, right? It's like he's not going to throw somebody out there and hope that – they have class. He's going to make his selections, I think, to start the season uh, of, of players that can exude class. Ashley Westwood comes to mind. Scott Arfield mm -hmm. comes to First mind. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, so Swiderski. Uh, Swiderski has class for sure. Copetti, exactly. does Copetti have class? That might be a, a separate episode. But yeah, you know, he mentioned the legacy guys. Uh, Yuri Tavares getting in there. He mentioned him by name. Uh, what's it? Who else uh, were the legacy guys that got in? Um, I don't know. Will Forbes play much for the legacy? Will, well, you know, uh, here, Dan, here's an interesting comment. I think legacy? Joseph Doak might might have might be right about this. Maybe he was talking about Tavares in this match, and maybe I maybe I yeah, because Yuri started. Yeah, he could have been. That could be it as well. And Tavares showed a lot of class for legacy. So I mean, he doesn't. It you know, it could, you could still be uh, right with your overall point in terms of like the guys who are out there are the classy ones, and like. I think Yuri Tavares showed a lot of promise last year, so if it, it's a, another log jammed position for him, but he's going to get a lot of uh, he's going to score a lot of goals in MLS Next Pro this year. That is a great call out, and that's why we do this live. By the way, is uh, you know we can we can we can interact with some fans and we can get called out and get corrected because hey, we need to get corrected on this show, otherwise we're not doing it right. That that's why we're always glad to have Joseph Doak on board. Also, he's a great tifos. He's he's probably one of the tifos of the year uh, on somebody's list for sure. Um, but you know the overall th the thing is though even though he didn't play I still agree with you that Yara Yurinen is the lead candidate to be the lock left back for this club because he has that class uh he is he does come from European leagues where he's achieved things and he's just carrying a small knock right now which is why he didn't play but like I really think um 
watch for urine and to, to uh, be ready to go, hopefully, in Coachella, most definitely. I wanted to call out some other TFOs for, for hanging out here uh, live on the show with us, uh, and specifically, um, Zach. What's up, fellas? Usually don't get time to chime in live, but keep up the great content. Cheers. Cheers to you, Zach. He already has yes. to take about Patrick Ajumong as well. He says Ajumong needs at least a consistent 25 to 30 minutes as a sub to start the season. He's the most exciting player on our roster to me. I 100% uh, agree with that, Zach. And if Ajumong doesn't find himself starting, I think – the biggest crime that could happen in 2024 for Ajumong is that he's brought in after the 75th minute and only gets 10 to 15 minutes a run. I think he deserves 25 to 30 uh, for sure. And if, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Danny, is that the same uh, Zach who produced the, the, the new kits, Zachary Branham? Yeah, it is Danny. That's Zachary Branham. Uh, who- I think that discord Zach. I think that's discord Zach. I don't think that's Zach Branham that just commented. He can let us know. I, I think it might. I, yeah, I think it might be. Uh, the reason why I say that is only because I'm looking at the profile picture. And see that, pro, oh, that profile. Oh, maybe it is. Oh, if it's the same no, profile, that, then yeah, let's. I'll, I'll buy that. It's the maybe. same. It's the yeah, same profile. Good. The same profile picture, Danny. Um, well, then I that's mean, a perfect I mean, segue into into how we want to end this episode, yeah. right? I mean, come on, dude. Uh, Joseph just corrected me. You don't have to <laughs> pile on here. Um, final final uh, segment tonight is uh, the fact that we've got a new kit. We've got a new kit, the 2024 Charlotte FC home kit. Looks like this. Something like this. That's <laughs> something like this. This is not official. This is not an official. This is a rendering from Zach Branham, a very talented artist, On uh, posts a lot of his stuff, on, uh, kit concepts on Twitter, on Reddit. Uh, have seen a lot of his work. And he put this together. Basically, if you're not familiar, what happened is uh, the video game EAFC accidentally leaked like dozens of the the 24 MLS kits, um, and Charlotte was we were glad enough to be included in that, so we could see get a look at what this looks like, and it looks beautiful to me. It's obviously a, a play on you know the Blue Ridge Mountains, the Smoky Mountains, the whole you know the coast, the the Piedmont, the, you know all of that, and uh, it just looks it looks so Carolina to me. I know some people said it doesn't really look very Charlotte, but it, it looks very Carolina to me. So I, I I love to see it. I'm into it. I think it's a good kid. I think Zachary did a, a great job uh, coming up with this design after he saw the the launch. I think the the question that we have is about the shorts and what they look like. But um, I, it's it's to me it's an easy purchase, Danny. I think I think that's a that's an easy purchase for for anybody in this fan base. And I think there's maybe one club that would have an issue with it, and it's Knoxville. Uh, in the USL, Knoxville in the USL has a similar kind of design, and they're going to be running their mouths about this kit for a couple months. But hey, I think the mm-hmm. best way to do it is say, "Yes, you got a good kit, and we copied you, and we're going to tweak it a little bit." But hey, we share the 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 mountain range that is literally the border between our state and yours. So hey, let's just uh, let's just share this kit and enjoy the 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 Blue Ridge Mountains together. Yeah, I, I think it's fiery. Um... I think it could work with black or white shorts. If they go with the white shorts, it almost becomes sort of like that all white look, especially if it's a white back. If just the blue is just sort of like a front pattern and then the, it's all white back and white shorts, it, it might look really nice. Um, we'll have to see. We'll have to see what the official thing comes comes back. You know, I know a lot of people, I might write about this uh, if I get the bug tonight. Um, we'll see. But like a lot of people are like, oh man, it's leak. It's horrible. And I understand like, it's gotta be rough for like the people that work inside the club and work inside the league. And they like, they feel so proud of like their launch presentations and they put a lot of time into like how they're going to reveal this. And so it does kind of suck to like have that kind of knocked out from under them by a video game company that accidentally leaked uh, the kits or whatnot. But at the same time, it's actually Huge, great PR for MLS. The kits should be out by now anyway. I don't know what they've been waiting for. They should come out before Christmas, let's be honest. So, like, they've had this kit for over a year. Like, we, I've talked to people in the club who tell me kit design process is like a multi-year thing. They probably already have the 2025 kits pr- approved, you know, like, hidden away. Hopefully, EA is not going to leak those ones too. But, like, I think they're, like, currently working on the 2026 kits now, you know. So, like, who knows what will happen. But, like... I'm ready for them to still roll out the launch campaigns. I feel bad for the people that, you know, don't get to like do their special reveals. I get it. You know, I work in, we've both worked in on long-term projects where like you want to roll it out the way you want to roll it out. So that sucks. But at the same time, 
for the fans overall, we get the kids. It's a lot of early season, preseason publicity on MLS in the soccer world. You know, get ties us in with the video game. The club actually released. So the funny thing is the club, the club never confirmed anything, but they did do a, they did tweet out like a little Sydney Sweeney meme, Sydney Sweeney hot ones, the new meme of the moment, uh, with her sort of like staring up at the uh at the at the screenshot of the of the EA twenty four kit. So I've all I, in my mind, it's all but confirmed that that's a f- going to be what the kit looks like mostly, but uh, with maybe some slight tweaks. We'll see. Yeah, hundred percent. And and we never. And let's be clear, we're, we're not saying that this is the new kit. Right. We're saying that um, this is a mock up of the new kit. Correct. That, that Zachary yes. did. Let's be, let's be clear. After, after <laughs> seeing what uh, FC EAFC or FC EA, whatever the hell it's called now. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't mind FIFA. that 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 FIFA is not on the game uh, because the FIFA right. event organization is not the best organization in the world, but uh, think- it's it's also confusing because we've been calling it <laughs> FIFA for many many years now. One the, the best take I saw online in the wake of this reveal, and it's kind of hinted at by Joseph Doak here. He says Joseph Doak comments that I'll play along with the special reveal and act surprised if they want me to, and basically, yeah, all you have to do is you still have to like. As long as we all agree to like tweet out like, oh, that's fire. Oh, can't wait to get it. Oh, I'm copping that immediately on the official rollout. Then it's also fine to celebrate the league as well. That's what I said. Totally. And we, we're still expecting the community kits this year too, right? So who knows that there's could be a third kit uh, coming as well. So I think what, what you've seen there, just based on the fact that Charlotte FC has addressed it, unless they're just really trying to um, – um, you know, pull one over on the fan base and and really screw around with us, which I don't which think that they're doing. Sense. Yeah, yeah. So I think that they're kind of hinting that yes, you're exactly right, Dan. It's something's like that. So uh, it's it's been a fun show. Been a, been a really fun yeah. show. I think um, <laughs> I, I really appreciate everybody hanging out here on a, on a Sunday afternoon. People that are here live, I appreciate you being here. And um, again, this is just a, a dry run. So so you're here. You you yeah. were able to watch the dry run of, of what we're going to do. And I think things that we'll add, uh, of course. Uh, we'll have highlights of actual uh, gameplay on these sh- Sunday shows as the season rolls along. We'll make sure to bring you those highlights of the game as well with post-game commentary and uh, maybe some some vlogging from the game as well. So uh, we're going to really step up this this YouTube channel on Sundays post-match throughout the season. So make sure you're here. You don't have to be live. You can you can watch on replay as well. Those Sunday night shows will will be published as podcasts as well. So if you're a listener to the show, if you're listening now on a podcast feed, whether it's Apple, Spotify, uh, Google, wherever you get podcasts, you'll get the audio of the show there as well. And we'll make sure that the, the, the show is produced in a way that it, it doesn't really impact the podcast, that it's still listenable and it's not a, uh, a video show, but you'll, you'll definitely see some highlights as well on this show. And if you are listening via podcast, uh, do us a favor. We haven't had a review or a rating in, in quite a bit of time. Um, so hit us with a review. Tell us what you like about the show. Tell us what we could do uh, this year on Apple Podcasts. Drop us a review on Spotify. Drop us a review as well. It really helps get the word out about the show. And what it does, Danny, is uh, this past weekend, I was uh, uptown in, in the courtyard and I uh, met somebody who asked me, hey, how do I get into Charlotte FC? Uh, just new to town. I said, well, there's a show called Charlotte Soccer Show. You can listen to that. <laughs> um, and what what is really nice is that when uh, a new listener pops open one of these apps and sees that that the show is rated highly, that it has good reviews, it, it gives us some credibility. And we really appreciate the TIFOs uh, for putting that out there and, and, and giving us those reviews and telling people what they like about the show just for somebody who, Danny, there's so many options that you've got. And I promise you this, though. Uh, there's... There's there's no option like like this show, and yeah. so if you if you want to uh, learn about Charlotte FC this year, if you want to have post game shows, if you really want to get into a, a good um, post game and and YouTube commentary about Charlotte FC, this is the place to do it in 2024. There's no doubt about that, Danny. Yeah, we got the best uh, best listening audience uh, in the in the Charlotte FC podcast and really any podcast game. I mean, we got the Tifos. They they keep us going. They fuel the the, the push to uh, create everything. We're streaming on Twitter. YouTube, Instagram. Uh, Zach comments that vlogs would be a must watch. Zach, come be in the vlogs. We're going to be vlogging at Hot Fly. We're going to be partying at Hot Fly. John mentioned it off the top. Let me just hit it again one last time. Uh, you know, we're going to be there for home games. We're going to pregame home games, but home games are kind of their own thing. The real party is the first road game, March 2nd. Be there all day. We're going to have music. We, we might have some prizes. We have a spot where you can take some pictures. We, might have some vintage jerseys on display that you might be able to buy, maybe even win. Maybe I'll buy you a beer. 
it could be crazy. March 2nd. Don't miss that. So, and also, let me just say, if you are watching this, my lighting has just been a mess. The sun is kind of setting through my blinds. I apologize to anybody who uh, was distracted by me playing with the lighting on the throughout the course of the episode. It's it's that time of, uh, of the day in the QC. The, the sun's getting low, Danny. It's That's a little it's bit. It's about to be Sunday evening, and I guess there's some NFL football to watch um, for, for the rest yeah. of the afternoon. So so we're going to do that, and we're going to see you later this week. We'll do another episode of Charlotte Soccer Show. Uh, make sure you stay, stay tuned for that. And... Um, you know, I think ultimately, Danny, uh, for me, this is a success as far as Charlotte FC's taking the field under new manager Dean Smith. And uh, the, the the last point that I'll make about it, Danny, is that this just feels so much better than last season for for very obvious reasons. Um, and you know, specifically uh, seeing seeing photos of the guys on the beach having a good time, enjoying their preseason. Remember, last year they got on a plane because one of their, uh, their teammates died. Uh, when they were at preseason in Florida. So mm -hmm. uh, putting that into perspective and comparing how the way this season has started compared to last, you know, the vibes are good. Uh, there's there's no doubt about that. So until next time, I'm John Hayes. He's Danny Brams. See you in Coachella, baby.